Ward on the right. Ricky Ward has climbed the ladder. Now, Mike, during commercial break, you said you like Tom Baker. <laughs> I like the way he looks in practice, too, but right now Ricky Ward is very much in command. And you say there's an advantage to having bold on these lanes so far today, and Ricky Ward takes advantage there on lane number 17. He opens with a strike. Well, there's always an advantage for any player who won the previous match. He's, as I said earlier, he's already used to bowling on that pair. Tom Baker has to get used to it right now. Well, just watching this guy in warm-ups, everything was in the pocket just like that. And a little emotion from Tom Baker. Tom and I have been good friends for a long time. We both started our careers back in the 70s. And, uh, and his, I, his I, first title came back in 1980, and he, he's still winning tournaments. Yeah, he's he's had a resurgence. His career was a little bit of, was in a little bit of trouble a couple of years ago, but he's retooled his game, found out how to use these new balls, and he's very successful. Won two times last year. Early double. Indeed, indeed. Tom Baker, 43 years old from Buffalo, New York. I asked him what the big difference for him uh, this week was, and he said it's the new hairdo and the earring. <laughs> I don't know, he's not, not too many pro bowlers with earrings. You know, I shouldn't mention this, Tom, but uh, you are two weeks older than me, old man. <laughs> Ricky Ward answers. Once again, we see Ricky Ward not being intimidated by anyone. It's just credit to his own ability to be confident in his game. There's a look at that new George Clooney <laughs> hairdo. And Tom there's, Baker. And with the earring. Pick up. You know, the pressure is on these guys, but they all seem to have a good time once they get to the championship round. Well, it's actually, it's easier as we see Ricky, Ricky Ward, Ward again. in a row. It's easier bowling on TV than it is making it. That may sound unusual hearing that from me, but it really is so difficult to make it to the top five that once you get on TV, I think you can relax a, you know, a little bit. Our a stat, little bit. A, a little, not much. Our statistician, Harry Sullivan, uh, he just showed me a little sign that said, Go Bakes. Bakes is uh, Harry's roommate, so let's see if he can do it. Indeed. A great shot on lane 18. Tom Baker. We mentioned he, he actually had some pretty good years in the 80s and slumped early in the 90s after wrist surgery. And now he has that new stance Wait, where, he, where he crouches down just a little bit. And he says the way he's throwing the ball doesn't put as much pressure on that wrist. He's, he's found something that works for him. The one thing he has never lost was his great enthusiasm to be a professional bowler. As he goes for four in a row, that's got to get. That's got to get. I guess it got. <laughs> what a great break. Four in a row for Tom Baker. Let's take a look at this shot. Mike, the ball just doesn't start making its move soon enough, but just barely tickles him over. Something knocks over that seven pin. Ricky Ward in the fourth. Four in a row for Ricky Ward. It's been nothing but strikes so far in our third match of the day. Ricky looks real nervous, doesn't he? <laughs> Baker trying to put the pressure on Ricky Ward, but Ward has survived the pressure already of first making it to the TV finals and then the first two matches. We're all even after four. If you count the last game, Ricky Ward has eight strikes in a row. And, and that's, that's where the that's streak where the stops. Yeah, the string ends there. Mike, he made a real good shot as we see a visual of Tom Baker probably saying thank you. <laughs> he changes balls, goes hard and straight. A little bit off balance, but no trouble making the seven pin. We, we talked about the difference in some of these balls earlier, but it's the reactive resin ball that will will hook a little bit more and, and more of the plastic that will stay straighter? Yeah, the reactive resin ball, what it does is it, is it hooks more off the dry and slides more off the wet, and that better hook. It and does. Tom, Tom Baker is having absolutely no trouble right now with five in a row. 
the reactive resins balls, not only do they do they hook more, but they hit harder once they get to the pins. They save energy until the ball gets to the pins and really, really unleashes a lot of power. Tom Baker won at Harrisburg last year, becoming the PBA's 18th millionaire. Same thing last year happened. That's the fourth power. He got it. Great shot from Tom Baker as he just barely knocks over that 10 pin. Talk about a crowd pleaser. Tom Baker, who is up by 21 pins, having rolled six frames. All six of those frames, he has rolled a strike. And now Ricky Ward to answer in the sixth. Well, the messenger came over, but it went in front of the seven pin, didn't quite knock it down. He'll have to be content to making spare here in the sixth frame and then starting up that string again in the seventh. Right now, 22 pins down as uh, Ricky's a little bit distracted, <laughs> but uh, I don't... A young lady is walking back to her seat and Ricky picks the ball up and has no problem, makes a spare. And so Ricky Ward with the spare in the sixth. That's all part of the game now, Ricky. They're coming at you from every angle. Ricky Ward was in our first match, and he beat Norm Duke. Moved on, up the ladder to Jason Couch, and he knocked him off by three pins. And he strikes here in the seventh. Now, just to let Tom Baker know he's still around. And you know, I don't think it's too early to start talking about it right now. Mike? Well, I, mean, well, I didn't know what the jinx rule uh, forget was. About, don't worry about the jinx. Tom it's 20, Baker. It's $20,000 if he can do exactly what he's done six more times for a 300 game. But Tom Baker not thinking about that right now. All he wants to do Perhaps is... he is. Well, he wants to keep the pressure on Ricky Ward. First things first. First you win the match. Then you take care of shooting 300. Seven in a row for Tom Baker. Watch the six pin, second from the right. It's the one that does the damage on the 10. Big thing here in Eagle Park, and you'll have He knows it's close. Will it strike? Oh, yeah. gets the last shot, 240. The partner goes 150. Up by 32. Baker in the eighth on lane 17. Tom Baker with eight in a row. Leads by 42 pins. The best that Ricky Ward can shoot, 268. Tom Baker, if he were to go, I don't want to jinx you on this, Tom, but if you went nine spare, strike spare, you'd shoot 279. We all know Baker's working on a 300 game. Ricky needs this. And Ricky got it. Staying in touch with Tom Baker, only trailing by 32 pins. I mean, what do you have to do, Mike? He's got four in a row, a couple of spares, and a double. I mean, that's not too bad a bowling. <laughs> And he trails by 32 yeah, pins. As if there wasn't enough pressure on Tom Baker, Ricky Ward trying to add just a little bit more. Well, if Ricky Ward can get the strike here in the ninth frame, it'll put a lot of pressure right back on Tom Baker. Looks good. Strike in the ninth for Ricky Ward. Well, maybe this could work in Tom's favor. If he was just strolling along with the front eight, and his opposition wasn't doing anything, he might get a little lax. Right now, he cannot afford to let up at all. Would he's, love to get the strike of the night. He's done it 35 times before. But a never 300 on, game, but never, never on TV. Never on national television. Come on. He got it. That may have been his best shot of the game. Very confidently rolled. Now the job for Tom Baker is twofold. If we take a look at this delivery, look how lovely the ball is set down in the lane, goes over about the sixth board, starts making its move about 48 feet. Lovely, lovely, 10 in the pit. If Tom Baker marks in the 10th frame, he wins the match. If he strikes out in the 10th frame, a little bit of a bonus, $20,000. He could lose this match. Because remember, in their first match... Ricky Ward is checking the scoreboard right now. Well, if Tom Baker makes a spare, 
If he makes a Sperry wins, this is the same lane that gave Norm Duke trouble. Remember, Norm Duke could not get the ball to get up to pocket. Just a little more adrenaline, a little more speed. He leaves himself a 2-8. If he gets nine, he'll shoot 266, and Ricky Ward would need two strikes and nine to win. Still a tall, tall task for Ricky. But with a spare here, he wins. Oh, he Look got at it. that one, baby. He says, okay, I didn't shoot 300, but I'm bowling for that title. What a great conversion for Tom Baker, the veteran player. Veteran players generally, better spare shooters. We see Tom switch to a ball that goes a little straighter, plays it over the third arrow, has to get to the left-hand side of the two pin, kisses it right into the, into the 10, and he's happy. That, that'll do it, there's your winner. Tom Baker defeats Ricky Ward in our third match of the day, and he advances to the final match. Let's watch Tom Baker on that split one more time. Just enough of the two pin to knock it into the 10. Oh. And that was your winner. And if you can't react on a shot like this, you've got no blood going through your veins, Bakes. <laughs> yeah, he's breathing. And now he's got a big smile on his face. And standing in the way of Tom Baker. And Ricky his Ward. first championship, Parker Bone the third. Ricky Ward. Excuse me, Mike. Ricky Ward, he is, he's going to shoot 268 this and game. And lose. And he's going to lose. The strike here is 268. Tom Baker shoots 277. And I'll tell you right now, I don't think Tom gives, gives any bit of emotion as to where, whether he didn't shoot 300 or not. I don't think he cares. He's just happy to win the match. Ricky Ward finishes with 266. Ricky Ward shoots a terrific 266, but he loses to that man, Tom Baker, who comes through with a 277 and advance, advances to the championship round against Parker Bone the third. 43-year-old Tom Baker will be going for the Brentwood Classic.